Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of the Whisper mission, uh, Harbinger on the Titan. Now as you can see I'm doing it on Sentinel. I'm using roughly the same setup that I used for my uh, Hunter and Warlock runs. Same weapon loadout, but there's going to be slightly different armor. I'm going to be using some exotic pieces as well. As you can see I've got Lime Rampant. I am running uh, Rasputin Warmind Cell build. I'm going to be switching at times to the Crest of Alpha Lupi and I'm also going to be switching to the Doomfang Pauldrons which are gauntlets that every time you throw your shield for every enemy it hits you get super energy back and then when you shield bash you get a shield back. But I'm starting with the line Rampants for obvious reasons. It just helps greatly with the with the, the jumping. Now as I'm doing this little jumping puzzle, most people will be aware of how to get into the mission proper. Uh, there's actually a mission marker, or there is for me, on the map. So I don't have to go to the EDZ, I can choose it from orbit. Now, there are some modifiers in here. Uh, taking, taking Vandals, put their shields up more. Uh, is it solar damage is increased? Uh, there's, there, there are some, some, some modifiers in here for sure. But something, I, I think I covered it in the Hunter run, but I'll cover it at the start here. When you get into, once you get us past here and you jump down to the dam, and you actually get into the mission proper, you're going to be taking out three kind of, you've got to take out three kind of taken champions. Uh, three uh, emissaries, I think. I think that's what they're called. Uh, depending on what, the, 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 depending on which one you take out of those first. Depending on which 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 of those emissaries you take out first, depends on what order you get them at the the circular boss room. So the one thing I didn't say, I don't think I said, was my my suggestions on which one to take first. I like to go with the 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 cabal first because the cabal spawn in with snipers. So this is us just in the main room. So the first the first enemy that you the first one of the the emissaries is uh, the wizard. Now, if you get them down to about half health, they go invisible, and then you can just forget about that one. That one will disappear to one of the rooms. So the idea is, you kind of deal damage to one of the emissary, one of the emissaries. It goes. It produces another sniper, and then you move on to the next one. You move them all from this center room, and then you go to their specific rooms. Now, as you'll see in the video, I'm actually taking out the snipers. There are about four snipers to start with, and every time you send an emissary to a room, a sniper will spawn in front of the room. So you can see here, I'm going to start actually with the Yan 7. Uh, quite simply, because this Cabal is arc shielded. So the Cabal is arc shielded, obviously the Wizard is uh, void shielded, and the Taken Captain is solar shielded. So as you can see there, the ads are spawning in, but the Cabal boy, he's ran away. So... <sighs> If this happens, you can see, I can just see ads creeping around. You can jump down to this this kind of circular platform in front of you and just go for the, the Cabal guy when he comes out. So I'm just just clearing out enemies, trying to get a war mind cell, get that explosion which deals a lot of damage to to a lot of the enemies. Now watch out for, uh, watch out for, for their, as you can see there, how much damage the solar does. And now we just want to do enough damage to send this. There we go. As soon as the shield goes, we just wanted to do enough damage to send the emissary to it to its room. And now I nearly ran away and realized that a sniper, a sniper will appear. And you can see there the cabal spawns into the top room. So, so once you take out the the emissaries, you can see we've we've done the we've done the wizard, uh, we've done the cabal. Now we're going to the captain. When you're coming back to the rooms, the rooms are all right next to each other. So, as you can see where we just took that sniper from, that's where the Cabal one is. I think just below the Cabal is the Captain, Taken Captain. And then across from both of those is the Void Wizard. So, the idea, as, as I say, now we're going to take this Captain out. Uh, well, take him down. And then he'll go shielded, like that. And now we're going after... We're going into the rooms now to take them down, so... I'm just going to switch to Doomfang, so, so another little kind of secret, my my affinities, so Solar Arc Void Armor, my affinities on my armor are the same on the exotics as they are on the legendaries, you see there I only hit that Vandal twice, 
and he put his shield up. So make sure you go to the highest one first to get the, the Cabal. I, I, I'm The affinities on, on my exotics are the same as the legendary counterparts, the legendaries that I'm using. So I made sure that my mod setup was exactly the same on the exotics as it was on the legendary, so that when I switch, I'm, I'm not all of a sudden thinking, why am I not dropping heavy here? Why am I not dropping, uh, you know, uh, machine gun ammo? Why am I not dropping this? Why am I not dropping that? And I'm going to also be showing you, I should have mentioned that, I'm also going to be showing you where the feather locations is. So the first feather location is right here. You'll see me in the video shooting at where it will be. This is where the first feather will be. There is a feather in each of the rooms. One of them, if you didn't know or you haven't already seen it in the video, you probably, I mean, there's a good chance you wouldn't you wouldn't know where it is. Uh, so once you, once you took down the Cabal, switch back to your Void weapon because the Void's going to be more prevalent than any of the other ones now. So this one is the, the Solar Shielded Captain. Now you will have, as I say, that's Solar Shielded, so you will have... Uh, a solar shielded captain, but you also have some void shielded wizards and two void shielded acolytes. So, really, in this strike, all you've got arc is is the cabal. So, where I've just shot there is where the second paracausal feather will be. So, as you can see, I just stuck a grenade on that that wizard, and now all I'm going to do is break one shield. And then, when I kill the captain, when I break the captain shield, the explosion will kill, because you, you, you break the one void shield, at the explosion, the elemental explosion breaks the second void shield, and then the elemental explosion, once you switch to Xenophage, off the solar, kills the two acolytes. So, it's all about efficiency. So if you go the route I'm going, when you come out of that captain, you're just going to turn left, and this is where the, the void wizard's going to be. So, the paracausal feather is in the room we've just come out of. So I'm going to I'm going to just make sure I've got my, my gauntlets on. And I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to burn my super. And there we go. That is that is this room cleared in essence. Now I'm just going to get rid of uh, my super. Because I can't get the third paracausal feather until my super's gone. There we go. Now, third one is, go up to this wall. You'll get, you'll get a, a marker to open the door when it opens. The third paracausal feather is in there. So, switch back to Arc, because I took out the Arc Cabal first. Which means in this next box, box section, I'm going to get the Arc Cabal Wave first. And the reason I like to go for that first is because that's got snipers. Get them out of the way, and your little perch up on the, where I'm going to go, you're kind of safe. Safer. You know, you don't, want, you don't want to kill the last enemy and then be like, Oh, I need to reload, get back and cover. You want to be dealing with those snipers to start with, and they come with the cabal. So, I think if I'm right, uh, so so when, when the cabal come in, we're going to get snipers. When the taking captain comes in, we'll get one unstoppable, and when the void shielded uh, wizards come in, we'll get two unstoppable. So you can just run up to the back here, jump on this pillar, and go straight up. Now you'll have these waves of snipers exactly the same as I'm, I'm getting them. So you've got two there, so what we're going to do is look for the cabal. Now, the great thing is, now you can do this any way you want. You don't have to follow my recommendations, because some people might have more problems with the wizards. The what you Whatever you get in the first wave will be red bar. So if you're having more problems with the wizards, then go for the wizards first, because you'll get them at a lower, a lower power level. You see there, there's the last sniper. Take him out. I'm just looking because just making sure that there's nothing else, which there isn't. And now we're gonna get this is the the captain wave, I believe. So just take this one over there. There he goes, and finish those off. I'm getting shot from behind because that's the captain. So we'll just what we're gonna do is just do a bit of damage here. Not not too much because. As you can see, you just take out this war main cell that frees up the, the unstoppable. I, I, I never done too much because I don't want to waste any shots. I don't have a lot of heavy, so you can see he's unstoppable. I've got, I've got, 
I've got uh, Spoils, Spoils of uh, War on, on my mark, uh, which basically means when I stop a champion, I get heavy ammo. So there's the other, the other, the other captain. Just break his shield, and now we're going to get the wizards. With the wizards, as I've already said, you're going to get two unstoppables. So get straight back up here, and then start looking for the, the wizards. So now we're going to change back to a void weapon, and that, we're going to keep a void weapon on from now on. Always make sure before you engage champions that you're reloaded. As you can see, I've spoke about this in videos before. Thought I was changing to my heavy and didn't change to my heavy. Watch out for these wizards because as you can see there, their, their blast radius is a lot higher. Uh, uh, not the blast radius, their, their fire rate lasts a lot longer than, maybe it's just me, but it lasts longer than I expected to. So, you just break this wizard shield again, and hopefully, I can finish this wizard off. Nope, not quite. Thought that I, th I thought the wizard had just went to hide behind the pillar, but obviously she didn't. So now I'll just do that, and that's the wizard finished. So now we're left with we're left with two unstoppables, which I want to get down as much as I can. Now remember, if you're doing this on the Titan, this would. This would probably be the time where you could change from Doomfangs to uh, uh, Crest of Alpha Loopy. Because Crest of Alpha Loopy obviously gives you uh, heavy back, uh, super back when you put your your tower and barricade up. Well, tower, rally, whichever one you're using. I am, I am currently using the, the tower and barricade. So I can see here I've got heavy to my right. So I'm just going to whittle one of these champions down just using the primary and you can see that you know I am doing quite quite a, a decent amount of damage so that one is unstoppable uh, un sorry that one is stoppable it is an unstoppable but it, now it's stoppable so what I'm planning on doing is stopping one of them I'll get this one a little bit lower I'm planning on stopping this one and then going down when it when it's when this champion stopped going down and then finishing the other one. So you can see there, stop, finish. Once you finish, get out of there. So we'll, we'll go and pick up the heavy that we knew was lying about here, and then just ring a ring of roses. Now as you can, there is no radar, so it does make it a little bit more difficult. Not much. You just have to use your eyes, and there we go, finished. And now there are there there are a couple of couple of ads like uh, that come in. To, I think it's two waves of these guys, nothing major. Uh, I have I have had this l leveled at me that the strategy that I'm using is uh, I have I have seen this in the comments that the strategy the strategy that I'm using it's. It can't be taken into consideration because I'm a high power level. Nonsense. Right? Maybe, maybe the speed I'm doing it at, maybe you have to slow down a little bit. But nothing to do with the power. The strategy is sound. So I'm going to change back to the... I know you don't really need the boots for this part, but it does speed it up. It's like anything, if you can jump, you can jump. But if you're struggling with the jumping, which a lot of people do, then I'm just showing you the, the right place to put these boots on. So we jump up here, and then what we can do is make it right across, just cut out a lot of this kind of jumping section. Now you could probably have made that without the doom fangs, but uh, without the line rampants. Uh, and now you're going to jump up round here, and you can see it's this. This is where the line rampants will kind of uh, come in handy. Completely missed that that those uh, those pipes on the wall. So I'm going to show you where the next. It's not quite here, but I'll show you where the next two paracausal feathers are, and that would be all five. As far as I'm aware, the triumph for finding all five in a week is bugged. So. Uh, massive surprise there. This this mission has been something really cool in the game. But I haven't really enjoyed not being able to do triumphs.
because they're bugged. I've had opportunities to get the Warden Seal. I'll get it hopefully today. Uh, because people haven't been on for me to run this mission with. But hopefully I'll get that today. But I could have done it all last week. I could have had this as soon as it got fixed. But, you know, I have run this with people. I've took people through it. You know, I remember somebody saying to me once in one of my streams, uh, rather than making videos, why don't you just help people? I do help people. And I make videos as well. Uh, the, the fourth paracausal feather is right down there. When you go down there, you've got to take a different route to come back up here. You'll see it right in front of you. It's below us to the right. And there's, there's like a normal void uh, shielded wizard, which is, isn't is too bad because we've got void on and, and she, there's some shadow throw, which actually, if you're struggling for ammunition, will really help you try and get ammo back. And the last paracausal feather is up to the right of where this hobgoblin is. I'm going to show you, but it's just so you get this view from here. There's like a tree on your right and the paracausal feather is at the bottom of the tree. Now, we, we do have another Unstoppable here, so it's a chance to get a bit more heavy. The Paracausal Feather is here. This is the final one. Uh, so, so what we've got here is we've got a Cabal, a Taken Cabal, and an Unstoppable. So, the plan with, with the Super, what we're going to do, because uh, on, on the Hunter I use Tether, on the Warlock I use Top Tree Nova. We're going to be using Bubble here, because basically that gives us like a 30-35% uh, damage boost which will really help because the xenophage without without the help of uh, the divinity isn't the best option really for dps it just is for bosses where you can put the divinity and just shoot you know but uh it's so good for everything else here now somebody else said to me and i think i replied with it's kind of a cheap way to to get down on a video, I'll oh, do it without this, because you can see that about any weapon, do it without the service revolver, okay, I will, <laughs> you know, do it without the pulse rifle, do it without the hunter, do it without, somebody said do it without the xenophage, well, the xenophage is good, but it's not requisite for this, I think personally, the, uh, the seasonal, uh, fusion, linear fusion rifle would be really good for this. So as you can see there, I changed, I changed to, uh, I changed to uh, Crest of Alvalupi. So now whenever I put a shield up, I'm going to get health. Now I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put my bubble down for the first wave because he goes away pretty sharpish in the first wave. And see now he is going to go, we are going to get a wave of ads in. I am looking for the solar shielded captain straight away. First wave is on the right hand side, so now that the captain's gone, we're going to get this wave coming in on the left. The reason why you want to try and get rid of the captains is once you get rid of the captains, you won't deal with multiple spawns. It's while the captains are up, and that's that's from my experience. I have not, I have absolutely no uh, proof of this, just from what I've seen, and and as I say, I say this in every run. Just watch the video, and. You know, if they don't come back, then it's right. But there is still a captain up, and I don't know if it's across both sides. So, there we go. I've got... I, I don't have a lot of heavy on me. I want to get rid of this other captain over the other side. So, I'm just going to go and get this heavy and take out these guys over here. Got a little bit more heavy. Go up and make sure there's nothing up here. Nope. So, we're, we're, we're cool. So, what we're going to do is try and take this captain... Just take a couple of these. Find out where the captain is. The goblins are a pain in the backside because, as we know, they'll just they'll just constantly shield, constantly shield the the knights. So there you go. There's 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 all the ads, all the captains down. We're just left with the ads. So from up here, I'll try and take. You know, if I can't, I'll go back down to my spot because we are going to attack uh, the boss from the, from the little spot at the front. So, but at least we know now we won't get any more ads spawning in. So as soon as this guy goes down, if he's the last, no he's not. So, goblins, yay. <laughs> we take all these down, there's just one more set I believe. And I can see I've got heavy there. There we go, boss is coming back, I'm going to run over and get this heavy. Taking a chance, but 
the boss kind of eats heavy. You know, and as long as you don't really, really aggro the boss, then you'll be fine. So as you can see here, you actually get him to go a lot faster than you normally would. And the thing about it is, just so people who don't normally run this subclass, they might not know this. Getting the overshield doesn't mean you've got your health back. Getting the overshield just means you've got an overshield. So, I'm just kind of... You can, because we've got uh, crest, the crest on, struggling to get shots on him. Uh, because you've got the crest on, when you're inside the bubble, you can actually uh, put up your... Put on your... Your... Uh, you can put up your barricade and get your health back if you need to. Now we're going to have to deal with, because, you know, his, his flame attack is so kind of annoying. The other thing you can do if you're in a fire team is you could you could forego crest of the crest. You could forego the crest, see that now he's going to go. You can forego the crest. For a solo run, it's, it's really good, but you can kind of not use the crest and use... We'll just hopefully get get some more on this night. If we can't, we can't. You can forego the crest and put uh, Helm of Saint 14 on, which gives everybody in the fire team. And that was just unfortunate. Yeah, the the crest, the, the Helm of Saint 14 gives everybody that goes to the bubble an overshield that lasts when they come out of it. So it's up to you. For, for a team based thing, the, the, the Helm of Saint 14 is miles better, it's much better to use. Uh, but obviously, obviously the Crest of Avalup is better for a solo player, because you get your health back. So, I knew I had Heavy out there. The, the, so, we've, I've spoke about this before, and I'll, cut, I'll touch it again, cover it again. There we go, there's the Knight on the, the left down. The biggest problem in this... As, as 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 you'll see there, you've just seen there the hobgoblins, man. They can make this run just so annoying, and I'm not a fan of any ads that can shield what and then still shoot you. They shield you, they sh sorry, they shield themselves, but they can still shoot you. I think that's for me. That's just uh, I'm trying. I'm looking for this uh, captain on the right. For me, that's I'm not going to go down, the, and I think it's quite a, a, quite a childish argument when it's when I hear this. It's lazy game design. I, I think that's a lazy critique, you know. Uh, but uh, I I don't think that I don't think it's lazy design to have that. I just think it's infuriating. But I, part of me wonders whether that, if that's the point of having ads that can shield each other while they can still do damage to you. Is supposed to be infuriating because let's be honest, people's a lot of people, a lot of the infamous or the the well-known pieces of content in the game aren't the easy things. You know, it's the stuff that took a little bit of time or a little bit of skill to work out. So as you can see, I'm just looking for a bit more heavy, another ad, and then we should be good. We've got one bubble. Here comes the boss. I've got more heavy. So now what I'm going to do is put put the bubble up, reload, and then just melt the boss. And 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 another thing before, while we're melting this boss, another thing that I should mention is for the we believe that the catalyst the th the the thing that we're doing is for the ship, right? You get progression on each character. So doing this on all characters, you'll end with I think I got 78. I must have missed a a, a, a feather on one of my characters. But if you do this on every character and you collect it, the, everything from every character, you get between 78 and 79% on that. So you would finish it very easily next week. And that's the run, guys. That is the Flawless Solo on the Titan. I've got one more run of this to do, which I'll probably do for the, for re, just before reset, which is I'll do a Flawless run with an underlevel character to appease anybody that's maybe looking at my power level and wondering how they're going to do this with their power level. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Until the next video, take it easy, and I'll see you then.